Hello everyone, welcome back to this video in which we are going to leverage the SSRF that we found while exporting our profile which contains a malicious username. Today, we are going to build upon that and hopefully gain remote code execution on the server. It's going to be a fun video. Let's get started. Okay, we see that we have the root user here. We see that there's uh, still some content here, but it's truncated and I can't scroll down because it has been taken. It's like the server, the headless browser on the server has snapshotted the uh, content of that page. And so we can't obviously scroll down. However, we can increase the height of our iframe and let's, uh, let's use maybe 1000. Okay, let's refresh. And do we get something here? Yep, 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 yep. We get the whole file. If you see closer here, we have a user gaming i1 that has been bash. Okay, that sounds promising. Now, what are the files that we are, we should like play with? Well, we can start with proc self on Viron. That contains the environment variables. Let's control R to refresh our page and nope, we have nothing. Is it proc self or self proc? No, I think it's proc self. Anyways, what else can we do? Let's uh, verify that we have access to the source code of the page. So we had like uh, HTML and then we had test two. And then we have, uh, we had a file called export.php, which we didn't have uh, access to from GitHub. So hopefully this would give us access to it. Control R. And yes, we indeed have access to it. Let me just zoom a little bit. Yeah, that's better. HTTP profile. Okay, so it's taking that content, HTML content from that file, which was poisoned by our value and then put it in it in a tab directory. And then it's adding some headers to download it by the server, by the browser. Nothing really uh, interesting here. All right, what, what are the other files that we can play with? Well, we, we know that there's a user called Gemini or Gemini or however you wanna call it. There are classic folders and files like, for example, bash uh, history, but I doubt it could be accessible from the user um, www.data, which potentially is running this web uh, browser, uh, web server. So another folder is .ssh and a default key could be idrsa. So if we gain access to that file, we could potentially use it to authenticate via SSH. So control R, cross our fingers, drum rolls, drum rolls, and oh, okay. So there is a private key stored in Gemini One's home folder. Well, let's grab it. Control C and try to authenticate with it. So I'm going to use maybe VI. Sorry, Nano guys. And uh, maybe name it ID Gemini1 and uh, paste our value here. Change mod for zero, zero. And hopefully we can authenticate using that user. CTF 08rootmeorg And we want to use the uh, private key. 
Yes. Ooh, look at that. We've gained access through SSH to the home folder of Gemini1 or to the server as the user Gemini1. That's sick. If we go to .ssh just to verify the permissions on that. So as you can see here, ID RSA is only uh, readable by the user itself, which means that Apache or two or whatever, the headless browser that's doing the snapshot is running as this user Gemini1. We can go to var www html test2 and ls the export. Export is owned by root. Okay, um, but we can't modify it to perform privilege escalation. Anyways, so in the next video, we're going to try and see if we can escalate our privileges to root. If you're interested in learning more about these techniques, if you are interested in pursuing an ethical hacker career, then I encourage you to head over to academy.thehackerish.com there you will find online courses that you can enroll to and just find a suitable course for you. It should give you a great start. Until next time, stay curious, keep learning and go find some bugs.